and it was possible that non-vaccinated children can get to those allergies if one or two parents were also vaccinated. Here's another study, pertussis vaccination and asthma. Again, almost 11% of children immunized with pertussis slash whooping cough got asthma. There was one case of asthma out of 91 who had no vaccinations at all. Another study by the British Medical Journal here um, basically says that children vaccinated with the DPPT, on this one we just added the um, polio vaccine to it, and the MMR had 14 times more asthma and almost 10 times more eczema than non-vaccinated children. The conclusion of this study was bizarre though. It is unlikely vaccines are a risk factor for asthma and eczema is what they concluded. How did they do this? They bent over backwards to deny the obvious. They came to the conclusion that children who are vaccinated usually go to doctors. Children that aren't vaccinated, their parents don't take them to doctors. So it's more likely that a child who is vaccinated is going to be diagnosed than one who is not. That's how they came to that conclusion. I'd also like to note that with, with eczema, um, this is a skin condition and it's usually a sign of a heavily burdened, overtoxic body. What happens is the liver gets so toxic and heavily burdened that now the skin has to take place and start to detoxify the body. That's why you'll start seeing skin conditions and rashes, because it's trying to eliminate the toxins. Asthma and vaccinations. Um, as you see here, vaccinated again, 25% had asthma. Non-vaccinated, only 2% had asthma. Vaccinated, more than 50% had atopic disorders, such as allergies, rashes, chronic runny, runny nose, things like that. Non-vaccinated, less than 10% had these disorders. I want to note here, on these symptoms, what's common with allergies? You have itchy eyes, watery eyes, scratchy throat, coughing, rashes, runny nose, things like that. These are all symptoms of a body trying to expel toxins. You're trying to eliminate it. You're, you're basically having fluids flow out of your body. Again, the body's trying to detoxify by getting rid of them. And also I want to note that non-vaccinated children may not fully be non-vaccinated. Some children do receive the vitamin K shot, which a lot of people think, oh, vitamin, vitamin's good for you. However, this injects a child with 50 times the amount of synthetic vitamin K which is very bad for the baby. They have been linked to liver cancer, leukemia, as well as other problems. Pertussis toxin here um, with vaccines, they're also implicated as the reason why diabetes is dramatically increasing. The pertussis toxin, which is part of the DPT shot, affects the islets of Langerhans. What that does is it makes insulin. Now Dr. Cutler writes, pertussis toxin is also known as the islet activating factor. Juvenile diabetes increased 300% from 1962 to 1976. There's absolutely no official explanation. Nobody has any idea why. The only thing we have done is mass immunize our children. Now, I know a lot of people nowadays say, well, it's because all they do is play Game Boy, things like that. And they, they eat food that there's hardly any nutrition. Well, back then, the Atari was just now coming out. However, kids were still active, and food was still considered food back then. So I highly doubt that those were the two reasons why diabetes increased 300% back then. Here's basically a, a chart showing the stunning con, um, coincidence here. The blue line shows the, insulin, the incidence of diabetes. The red bars show the pertussis immunization coverage. I mean, you can just kind of follow that pattern. It's not only asthma, allergies, and diabetes that vaccinated kids get. Dr. Robert Mendenshaw said this, immunization against relatively harmless childhood diseases may be responsible for the dramatic increase in autoimmune diseases such as cancer, leukemia, rheumatoid arthritis, multiple sclerosis, Lou Gehrig's disease, lupus, and Guillain-Barre syndrome. Again, I ask, are kids really healthier from these vaccines? My biggest concern as a new mom was what if my child gets one of these relatively harmless childhood diseases? Am I somehow jeopardizing my child by not vaccinating them? That was my biggest concern. Um, I would also like to note, as I go through this seminar, you're gonna notice there's more evidence that the vaccines are actually the things that are causing these diseases that we're trying to prevent. Um, there is more and more vaccine-induced measles, vaccine-induced polio. You're, once again, the media's not gonna tell you this, but, but I do have proof of it. So right now we're going to look at some childhood diseases. I want to warn you, you'll be viewing some graphic pictures here. Um, these are the pictures the MDs will show you to try to convince you that you need to vaccinate. 
um, I first thought with my age, you got the measles, it was a death sentence. You died. That, that's what I thought. That's what my age group thought. Um, and I think, as I said, most felt that way. I always kid my girls up front when someone comes in with a health history that they had mumps or measles. I'm like, look, you guys, they're still alive and they had the mumps or measles. So, because um, I did, I thought, you died from them. Okay. With the measles, um, it was common in the mid 1960s. 90% of, of everyone received or got the measles. It was the most common childhood disease. Majority had no complications. The average age was a four or five year old who got this. Now it's being pushed into 10 and 14 year olds. Now they're starting to vaccinate the population again for a second dose. It's spread in the air droplets, and there are reports that the virus is, is mutating. Here's a picture. Um, symptoms, again, of the measles, cough, fatigue, sore throat, runny nose, conjunctivitis. Again, these are all symptoms of the body trying to expel the toxins. Four days after they've been exposed, you'll get a red bumpy rash. Usually it'll start on the neck and face, then it will spread to the trunk of the arms and legs. Treatment, usually you want to control the fever, don't suppress the cough. Again, the, the cough is, is trying to do the body good by eliminating that, that mucus. Fruits and veggies for the diet, you want to diet high in vitamin A because measles can actually rob the body of vitamin A, which can lead to night blindness. Lots of fluids, six to eight percent will develop pneumonia from this or an ear infection or diarrhea. 0.001% may develop encephalitis and they, and they may die, but not always. I also want to note those that did die from the encephalitis were also hospitalized. They were given immunosuppressive drugs when they were in the hospital. So it's hard to say which did what. With the mumps, common in children age 5 through 19, now being pushed into adulthood. Spread by air droplets, inflammation of the parotid or the salivary gland, they'll get the puffy cheeks. It may also affect the ovaries, the testes. Very rarely does it affect the meninges. Here's a picture. <clears throat> Child with the mumps. Then you can see the glands that are affected down there. Symptoms, inflammation of the salivary or the parotid gland. They'll get a fever, be fatigue. 25% in males, it affects one testy. Extremely rare to affect both. And trust me, Dennis, you could populate the whole world with just one testy, all right? <laughs> okay, so, big guy. Vaccine was developed for males. But again, they're making females get this, hoping that we'll just kill the disease altogether. Treatment, control the fever, not, not with aspirin. Um, ice on the swollen neck and face and salt water gargles for the throat. 75% will heal without any complications at all. Rubella or Jumerin measles, common in two to eight year olds. Now it's being pushed to 20 to 30 year olds. Most ha have no symptoms. Not serious in, in most people, however, it's devastating in pregnant women. So I wanna bring you up here. Who's more likely to get pregnant? zero to two year old or a 20 to 30 year old. So now we're seeing an uprise of congenital rubella syndrome which can kill an unborn baby. Symptoms in children, usually a rash, and that's all. In adults, common cold, swollen glands, then a rash. Arthritis in women, encephalitis, and then one in 6,000 does affect, um, in, one in 6,000 will get the encephalitis, and it does affect adults more than the children. So once again, had it have stayed where it normally was, you wouldn't really have any, any symptoms. So um, serious symptoms for a fetus under 20 weeks old in treatment, usually there aren't any symptoms to treat. Polio, everyone remembers Franklin D. Roosevelt. He was behind the desk in a wheelchair. Um, he contracted polio 95%. There are no major symptoms and recover without permanent damage. It's, it was known to be a viral disease. And when I say viral, I'll show you why next time. Um, it can affect the nerve cells in the arms and legs. Sometimes they had to have the iron cast for breathing. Transmitted via fecal matter. There's been no natural case reported in the Western Hemisphere since 1991. There's been nil since 1979 in the US. However, in 1980 and 85, out of those 55 cases, four of them were travelers. Once again, they don't know how they were vaccinated or not. But 51 out of those 55 cases was vaccine-induced polio. What happened was these new babies were vaccinated the caregiver would vaccinate, or excuse me, would change the diaper of the baby. Somehow they'd get fecal matter on them. It didn't turn the body. That caregiver then got polio from that new, newly vaccinated infant. And it is paralytic polio. Yeah. Same thing, symptoms 95%, usually no major symptoms, but they are carriers. That infant was a carrier for that. Less than 1% results in that paralytic paralysis. Again, it can damage the nerve cells. 
Vaccine-induced polio is the number one cause of polio paralysis. Treatment for polio, fluids, rest, fever control, paralytic treatment, once again, this does de um, depend on the severity. Hep B, hepatitis B virus, um, it does inflame the liver. About 5% permanent damage, less than 5, transmitted through the blood or semen or from the pregnant mother. Once again, this is less than 1%. Who is the vaccine created for? This was created for promiscuous people, prostitutes, IV drug users, people like that, where these fluids would, would be commonly transmitted. It started to decline about 10% every year since 1986. This was because of safe sex precautions as well as um, clean needle precautions, things like that. So these vaccine makers had all this extra stored up vaccine. What do we do with that? Mm, we need to target a new population. So let's give it to babies now. So guess what, 1990s, this was the vaccine that they started now giving to infants right at birth. Um, again, Hep B is not common in the US, less than 2% have this. Um, same thing with Hep B vaccine, it only lasts about seven years, then you need a booster. So if the mom who just had the baby doesn't have it, and that two-hour-old baby isn't having sex or doing intravenous drugs, why again do they need it? Money. And plus, you don't, you don't want to waste a perfectly, perfectly good vaccine. <coughs> Hepatitis B, symptoms, none to mild to severe. First week through four weeks, you'll get flu-like symptoms. May have jaundice, which is the yellowing of the eyes, yellowing of the skin, dark urine. About 200,000 adults in the U.S. do have it now. 95% almost recover completely. Almost 5% will have a chronic infection, and then two-thirds of 1% may die from an acute infection. Treatment again, rest, avoidance of alcohol. You don't want to tox the liver. It's already being burdened by this um, immune booster and a hyperimmunoglobin just to help increase that immune response again. Chicken pox. Do I have to go over this one? Okay. Aww. All right. Graphical evidence shows us vaccines did not save us. Where's the proof that vaccines are the reasons why these diseases are no longer around? These graphs that I'm about to show you are gonna show you they were starting to decline on their own before vaccines were even introduced. They're a little blurry, so I do apologize. Here you can see measles, you know, killed, sorry, I shot anybody, killed a lot of people back then. The death rate was very high. However, they didn't start vaccinating until here. So you cannot convince me that the vaccine got rid of measles. Same thing with diphtheria. The two note shot, um, this is a live vaccine introduced and this is when a dead vaccine was introduced. Same thing, death rate was super high back in the day. But you can see it was definitely on its way out before they started vaccinating for it. Same thing with polio. Vaccine was here. I wanna note this little bump here. Um, what happened here was they invented oral polio vaccine, which was a drop they put in the mouth. This actually caused more polio. So that um, was pulled from the market in the year 2000. Whooping cough pertussis, I want to note, it's cyclic nature. You can see it's up, down, up, down, up, down. Whooping cough is cyclic by nature. Every three to four years it peaks. Once again, I do apologize for not having a chart that says today's date because it, again, is on the rise. It's cyclic by nature. You cannot fool Mother Nature. This is the nature of the beast with whooping cough. All right, I kind of want to show you guys that. Those are the full charts. Now here's the chart they'll show you though. So this is basically the full chart that they're gonna show you and we'll say the vaccine was introduced right here. What chart do they show you though? This one. So you can go, oh wow, it, it really did, it really did work. It really did help decline it. That's the chart they show you. All right. So can anyone raise their hand if you had your scarlet fever or typhoid fever vaccine? Anybody? Basically there wasn't one. So again, I ask, why are those very rarely around anymore? I don't get big farm any idea. Yeah. Okay. Smallpox death rates. Um, I want to show here, this is kind of the death rate of the smallpox. It was starting to decline until vaccination laws were enforced in the late 19, or 1860s. This is what led to the 1870 smallpox epidemic in England and killed a ton of people. 